And I wasn't kidding you when I told you that I like my eels for dessert. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that. And you have to start with almonds. And here I've got almonds that I'm, well, I've been chopping very, very fine. And that's really critical to this recipe. So you want to start with whole almonds. And you can use either blanched whole almonds. You could use slivered almonds if you wanted to, too. Or you could use almonds like this, you see, that are not blanched. About a pound of whole almonds. That's going to give you about three and a third or three and a half cups of finely chopped almonds. And here I've got to get the rest of them chopped. Or that is also 450 grams in case you want to weigh it out. I'm going to throw these in now anyway. So now I've got my almonds. I'm going to put them right in my bowl. And now, what else do I need for this? Well, now for these particular eels, you need sugar. And you know, the first time I had this, I said, well, this reminds me very much of a macaroon or of what the Italians call pasta reale, an almond paste. When you think about it, that's what almond paste is, ground up almonds and sugar. And I've just added about a cup and two thirds of sugar. So I want to get that mixed up fairly well. And now you can do this with a spoon if you want, but you know I like to do things a mano, so I'm just going to do it with my hands. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about citron. Here's a half of a citron. Now, citron is a member of the lemon family. It's like a big lemon, and it grows in the Mediterranean. And the Italians love to put this in a number of desserts. You see it in all kinds of fruit cakes and breads. And it's sticky. You see what they do? They take this and they candy it in sugar and water. And then they cut it up in small little pieces like this, you see. And they add it to fruit cakes and breads, cookies. And you can also put this in eels. So I want, oh, about two ounces of this. And I've got some right here, you see. So I'm just going to add the rest of this, cut this one up just a little bit smaller. And that is sticky, I have to say. So in that goes. And then, oh, you can have either lemon or orange peel. Now, this is just candied orange peel. And if you can't find citron like this, and it is hard to find, well, then you can just use lemon and orange peel. So all told now, I want about 2 thirds of a cup. So I'm going to put this in and add this, you see? Now, isn't this starting to look delicious? And you say, well, what's the connection with the eel? I'm getting there. You're just going to have to wait. So now mix that up real well, you see? And now you need egg whites. And here I've got, oh, four egg whites. I'm going to add just a few more because, you know, three or so. That's about three. And again, I'm going to use my hands. So now you want to get into this and really mix it around. And when I make this recipe, you know, I think of not only the fact that this is used at Christmas time, a specialty item in Perugia. So now I've got my mass, you see. And now I need a little flour. So I want to put some flour down. And make sure you've got a well-floured board. And just stick your mixture on. We'll get that a little more flour. And then work with well-floured hands. And now you want to get this into a ball. You can make one giant eel, or you could make several smaller ones. I'm going to cut this in half and work with one piece at a time. And then I can start forming, shaping my eel. I have to put some scales on this guy. So now to do that, you take a scissors like this, you see, and you start making little V's. So now I've got some whole almonds, you see? And I just want to insert the almonds with the pointed side up into those little slits that I made. So you want to go all the way down the back of the eel. And now he is starting to look real, isn't he? And now while you're doing this, you want to have your oven on. Get your oven on preheated to 300 degrees or to 325. It's going to depend on your oven. But usually I cook these at about 300 degrees degrees and you want to cook them oh for about 20 minutes. So there, there's the scales and now we have to give him a mouth 
and eyes. And here you could use, oh, currants. These are currants. You could use, I've got some candied peel here, some red candied peel. Today, let's put currants in for the eyes. So there's an eye, and there's, whoops, he's stuck on my finger. There's another eye. And then you can take just a piece candied citron and stick it right there for his mouth. And now you see he's ready to go into the oven. So into a 350 or 300 degree oven rather and let him cook for about oh 20, 25 minutes just until nicely browned on top. And then when they're cooked, he'll look just like that. And now you really want to let that cool down. While they're cooking, you've got to get some jam ready, you see? Because now what you're going to do, of course, is glaze these after they come out of the oven. So I want to start up my pan here. And now you can use, oh, any kind of jam that you'd like. But I've got some apricot jam here. And all I want to do is put that in my pan, you see? And I just want to get that warm. So now when the, the big eel has cooled down some, well, then I can go ahead and brush him with this. So I'm going to let that just sit in there. And every once in a while, I'm going to give this a stir just to get it down to a liquid. So what you want to do is, first of all, you have to get it off the paper. So, and this comes right off if you have it on parchment, you see? Just comes right off. If you had done it on a cookie sheet, you would have had to use a spatula and really dig it off, and then you could have ruined it. So now, this looks good. I can turn this off, and I want to bring my rack over, you see? And there it is. And I'm going to take him off now and use this piece of parchment right underneath this. And now, I need a clean brush. And I think that looks just about right. Let me take this out. And now, I'm going to take my eel and put him right there and bring him to life for you so I can move this out of the way. So now all you want to do is take some of that jam, you see? And then, look at that. Just gently brush him all over. Now, if you didn't have apricot jam, well, you could use something else. You could use peach. But in Italy, in Perugia, they used apricot. So that's why I'm using it, because I like to stick pretty much to tradition. And look at how beautiful that dresses that up. And of course, when you eat this, you have this with coffee, or you can have it with wine. And these are just broken up into pieces and then passed around. So I'm going to give them a little bit more.